Well, my next guest tonight is a political insider in both Washington and Berlin. He is an authority on the transatlantic relationship. Jackson James is president emeritus of the American Institute for Contemporary German Studies at Johns Hopkins University. He joins me tonight from Washington. Jack, it's good to see you again. I want to start with this press conference between the U.S. president and the German chancellor. Did Mr. Schultz, did he do what he needed to do today? I think he did. I think he basically got what he needed from Biden. And I think basically that was, uh, we are partners in leadership, to coin a phrase from a long time ago. And I think that the details in terms of things like, what are you going to do under specific conditions? At, you know, by the example being Nord Stream, of course, the elephant in the room. I think he just played that out and said, we're all going to be on, on from the same song sheet. I don't think he was necessarily going to reveal anything because he's speaking not only, by the way, to an American audience, he's speaking to a German audience mm -hmm. and to a European uh, uh, audience. So I think he played it safe, perhaps too safe. But that was his plan, I think, from the start to get confirmation from Biden. We're on your side and to make the same statement standing next to him. Do, but Jack, do you think, though, this is going to feed into the the, the worries in Washington of Germany not being a, a reliable partner, the fact that Chancellor Schultz was not able to say, like President Biden, that if Russia invades Ukraine, we will kill Nord Stream 2. I don't think he's going to... He, he's under that particular slogan. He's got some, some sort of strategic ambiguity holding back to see whether or not he's going to play that card or not depending upon what Putin does. And again, you know, I want to point out, there is a lot of domestic politics as well as uh, foreign policy in this discussion going on here. So I sense that there are going to be people in Washington, perhaps in Congress, that are going to call him out on that and say, you know, get on the stick and say you're going to do this. I don't think he's going to do it. He certainly didn't do it. And the question mark is now going to be what happens with Putin's activities. But I have a feeling that if it's going to come to an invasion, that Germany is going to be on that side and they're going to stop Nord Stream 2. He's got too many other people in the government that I think are going to probably be... be behind him on that. The most important uh, question that he's probably going to ask is, how am I going to convince my domestic audience that this is the right thing to do? Yeah, he's going to come back. I mean, he's going to be on a plane in an hour or so coming back to Germany, and he's going to be coming back to a country where there's been a lot of criticism of him being the invisible chancellor, missing in action. What will today's press conference do to combat that criticism? Well, I think, you know, by virtually coming over and getting this, you know, report card from from Biden saying, you know, we're all on the same all on the same side here. And then uh, basically heading from there to uh, uh, Moscow and, and, and other trips that he's going to make. I think he's going to basically show I'm 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 on the I'm on the case, guys. Um, but it's at the same time, it's going to be a question mark of push comes to shove whenever that happens if Putin does what he's threatening to do. And I don't think at this point there's clarity um, about everything that's going to happen uh, if that happens. But I think it's pretty clear that he will pull, uh, pull the, the Nord Stream card out and say that's now off, that's on the table, and now it's gone. Okay, and what happens next week? Um, the chancellor, he's going to travel to Ukraine and also right. to Russia. His leverage right now in, in dealing with this, um, what did today's visit to Washington do to, to his power? Well, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, he also mentioned the fact that he's using the, Nor the Normandy uh, the format to continue talks there. He's got, um, you know, the French uh, out in front of him, and we have to figure out what they're talking about to uh, Putin. But I think that basically it gave him some leverage with regard to what the entire European transatlantic uh, response is going to be, even if that is somehow disguised at this moment by him not saying Nord Stream 2 expressly and, and saying, this is going to be something that we're going to do. You're going to be very, very much paying a price for this, uh, even if he doesn't say it, the words Nord Stream 2, I think that this gives him some uh, cards to play with regard to talking to Putin. But I think it's it's important to him 
that in their view, in his view, mm -hmm. that this so-called strategic ambiguity vis-a-vis -vis Putin is supposed to play a role in getting him to think twice about going into Ukraine. If mm -hmm. he does, we got a new ballgame. Germany has been criticized a lot by the U.S. Congress for not being willing to send weapons to Ukraine. But we know, and if you look at the numbers, since 2014, uh, Germany has provided more economic support to Ukraine than any other country. Is that fact being ignored in Washington? It may be, I think. I mean, I think that to some extent, the question mark that he had, he just said it in his interview, uh, there is, you know, this law in the books that you're not supposed to send weapons into a, into a conflict zone. They made an exception with the Peshmaga. And I think to some extent, he's going to try to make up for that by saying that they're going to increase uh, financial support as well as military presence in other NATO countries. Uh, I think that's what we can expect the Germans to do. And the financial side is, I think, also important to Ukraine. Um, and it has been the, the top financial source for Ukraine for the several years past. So I think that there, there may be a, a better way of looking at what can we do to get Germany to do and say what it can do and maybe not get so fixated on what it can't. Jackson James, it's always it's good to have you on the show. We appreciate your time and your insights tonight. We will see what this new chancellor, what he does next week when he meets with the Ukrainians and the Russians. Thank you.